the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We meditate on this great mystery of the Most Holy Trinity, that there is one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God is not solitary. God is a society of persons. This is an invitation for us made children of God through holy baptism, an invitation to join and enter to be established forever in that very society of the three divine persons. Such is our calling. I always find it very appealing to think that if there are more than one or even only two persons in God, if there is really, so to speak, a group, a society of persons, then well then, if we dare say, as we should, there is room for more. And us, albeit created, unlike God, our Creator, are called to join in that society of love and sanctity in the very bosom of the Holy Trinity. Holy Church is the Holy Trinity as participated. Holy Church is the ordered and holy gathering of every rational creature around the Creator, the Redeemer, around the Holy Trinity, in fact, within the Holy Trinity, suffused with God's grace as we are already here and as we will be forever if we die in the state of grace. To be a member of the Church is to be made part of the Holy Trinity itself, not that we become God in the literal sense. We retain our human nature. We do not acquire or swap for the divine nature. But it is God's mysterious will and benevolent design that we should be elevated gratuitously to a level of intimacy with him, which is beyond our nature and will be our enjoyment and bliss forever. In heaven, dear friends, we will be consumed in grace, never to lose that grace through sin. We will be furthermore transfigured in glory. We will understand God as truth in the Son. We will love God as good in the Spirit. We will proceed from God as from our adoptive Father. The dogma of the Most Holy Trinity, therefore, is the most important of Christianity, together with the redemptive incarnation. It is an anomaly that anyone should profess to be a Christian while not knowing well what such a dogma entails. Worse would it be if anyone called himself, herself a Christian and did not actually believe that there is one God in three divine persons, equal in might and majesty. 
So important is that dogma which we heard revealed from the very lips of the Lord Jesus in today's gospel, that it seals every proclamation of the faith. This starts with what we call the doxologies after the word doxa, which is Greek for glory. That prayer we are so familiar with, glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is what we pray at the end of every psalm. All of us clerics, for instance, like this morning, the lords of the Holy Trinity, this afternoon, Vespers, every psalm ends with that profession of faith in God, one and trine. So do the collects of the Mass, when the priests say, per dominum nostrum, etc. He always includes the three divine persons. And this extends even beyond the altar rail, when, dear friends, you pray the Holy Rosary. Well, at the end of every decade, I believe you also invoke the Holy Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. This also appears when we sign ourselves with the very symbol of our redemption, that is, the sign of the cross, saying in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Finally, the very channels of our spiritual vivification, the seven sacraments, are also performed in the name of the Most Holy Trinity. Before I conclude, I would like to invite you to visit a particular building. It is a small house. It was built not far from here, in the middle of England. It was built by a man called Sir Thomas Tresham. It is called Rushton Lodge. Now, what is very significant in that house, something I have never encountered anywhere, everything is measured dimensioned according to three. The house is a triangle. The windows, the decoration, the height and width, everything bears the sign of the three. And why is that? Because Sir Thomas Tresham was a Catholic living under harsh persecution during the Protestant Reformation. And he dedicated his wealth to that architectural statement of his faith in God, one and trine. The house of Rushton Lodge still stands and can be visited. This was not the folly of a rich man, but the courageous statement and artistic of a persecuted Catholic. Friends, let us dwell in spirit at least in such a shrine to the Holy Trinity, and the Holy Trinity will be pleased to dwell in us as in its human shrine. May our Blessed Lady teach us to do so, she who is the daughter of God the Father, the spouse of God the Holy Ghost, the mother of God the Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.